<laughs> you know, I'm fucking starving. All right, football's awesome here. It's the it's now officially the off season of it, edition of football's awesome. Uh, with the man Colin Finash. Uh, Football is awesome, Ernest Christian. It is awesome. We, we officially uh, Super Bowl Fifty Six in the books. The Rams are Super Bowl champions. Uh, I mean, I guess we can start there real quick if we want to. Um, you were out in LA all week last week. I was. You no know, all festivities. Um, your thoughts, take, your takeaways from the weekend. Your takeaways from the week, your takeaways from the game, and everything else in between. Well, first of all, for the week, man, listen. <clears throat> Covering the Super Bowl is awesome. Um, yep. Just like football. Correct. And, and yes. Um, saw a lot of people. It's one of those things, uh, Ernest Christian, where myself and my friend, uh, Controversy Raphael Haynes, the owner and proprietor of the Three Point Conversion, bing! Um, he would be on Radio Row and I would need to break off to go to, let's say, a Bengals uh, uh, availability um, because I was the one covering the Bengals ones while our own Carita Parks of the three-point conversion was handling the Rams, um, the Duchess of SoFi, as I've come to call her over that week. Uh, (laughs) um, By the way, she will be on the Huddle Up podcast, not this Tuesday, but the following. Um, Yeah. he, like I think one example was is like, uh, hey, you know, uh, Fred Taylor came by, former Jacksonville running back. I'm like, oh snap, why did I miss that? Oh, because you were over here <clears throat> covering events with Maurice Jones Drew, another NFL running back, or you know, talking to the Super Bowl runner up, Cincinnati Bengals, or Steve Mariucci of NFL Network, or James Jones of NFL Network, or um D'Angelo Hall of N- you get the point. Which by, way, not, which, by the way, you can see on, on Kyle's uh, Instagram and Twitter feed, um, those uh, pictures and video snippets and whatnot. At the SOTG. And also, if you dig Facebook, uh, you can find me on Facebook as a student of the game, viewing those things as well. Bing! Um, and just a lot of good stuff all the way around. Um, had the opportunity to go to um, at least the backstage of the NFL Honors. Um, well, specifically the, NA, the NFL Network uh, headquarters, which is like... A, a stone's throw away from SoFi Stadium, and there got to um, be in a press conference with the new NFL und- uh, inductees. Actually, had the first question of that press conference talking to Tony Baselli. You know, since I cover the Jaguars for the three-point conversion, bing, and then also um, got to talk to a, a a certain Hall of Fame inductee that was a giant killer in his time. I'm sure one Bryant Young. So. Uh, that was cool all the way around. And that just scratches the surface of some of the things and people I ran into and saw. I even had a Louisiana day where I walked past Sean, former uh, Saints coach Sean Payton in the morning and in the afternoon, shook hands and spoke a little bit with a very old coach Ogeron. I said, Kyle, that, it was very good to hear from you, Kyle. Which, which based on, I, I texted you last, last week too. He was on the uh, Colin Coward podcast. So. Yes, he was. Very good podcast. He was out and about trying to be seen and, you know, <laughs> spread his wings and fly and good, God bless him. In fact, he might be uh, having his own thing there on the volume as well. So I would love that. I would. I would. I listen. I would need to get in touch with Coach O and be like, "Do you need? Do you need a key grip or anything, man?" Yeah. You know. <laughs> so okay. Um, and the game itself, though. Um, obviously, the Rams win the the uh, Super Bowl fifty six. Um, in a very uh, very t- tightly contested game. Very very. Yes. Um. I guess really, I mean, I, I already said my piece on the game. What's your piece on the game? Um, was, was you know, was, the Rams were almost you know coming to the game, but they were a better team. Bengals, you know, I mean, a lot, a lot of things happen. Odell gets hurt. You know, there's a lot of things happening in the game. Um, what were you take from the Super Bowl? Yeah, whoever thought, whoever said this particular game is kind of a mediocre one and just kind of run of the mill has just been spoiled. You know, I, I, I'll not forget. Um, I guess it's a few years back. We're going back to 2018 or so. Um, when the Broncos won over the Panthers and how I made, I did a video uh, with Demosthenes Euclid that you could still find on um, hilaritybydefault.com or Hilarity by Default's YouTube channel Bing! about, you know, how good we've gotten it in, in recent years with Super Bowls, man. You know, I mean, I know the, the, the Bucks crushed the Chiefs, but has there really been a bad game lately other than maybe Broncos Seahawks? 
right? Like, oh, not really. There have been a lot of good football games, and one that I, at the very, at the very least, it's the best one that I've seen personally, if not the best, most competitive of all time in the Steelers and Cardinals, right? <clears throat> so I say all the above to say, y'all spoiled if you think this was a boring game. However, Ernest Christian, while the score is close, I think the Rams dominated a lot more than the score. There were a lot of little things that kept this game tight. And, and to be honest, it with, with some of the uh, mishaps and what have yous um, that took place, Aaron Donald should have gotten the MVP. I am mad at Cooper Cup getting it because the press at least didn't, you know, just award it to the quarterback on merit. But uh, see, the press in that room that votes for that and the people that do, other people that do, aren't football people per se, a hundred percent. They don't necessarily watch film. They're kind of like you in that way. Anyways, so <laughs> fuck film. Um, yeah, well, and if you say that, you've now also done that to the any chance of Aaron Donald getting a Super Bowl MVP. Listen, Cup's numbers were adorable. Everyone forgot the first half where he was basically useless. Meanwhile, the player most singularly responsible preventing this game from being a running uh, a runaway is Aaron Donald and Ernest Christian. I'm going to demand you look his middle name up because that's how we should talk about this man here too for. I agree. I'll look up in a second. Um... Matthew Stafford, uh, we talk about legacies, talk about this and that. You know, we, you and I have been one of the big, I've been some of the biggest Stafford defenders in the last, you know, decade on this, on this podcast. You know, talking about, you know, just like him being built away in Detroit, despite, you know, and to me, I've always said for years, you said for years that if Matthew Stafford's on a team that's worth a damn, this guy could take you forward to, forward to the playoffs, possibly Super Bowl. And in just one singular year, he goes from the, the from the, the, the doors of Detroit to L.A., and in his first year, he wins the, the damn thing. From basement to booyah, right? I mean, and listen, it also helps that his defense has Aaron Charles Donald in place. Um, Charles, really? Charles? Confirmed, yes. Yes, awesome. Charley. Charley. Aaron Charley Donald. Cra- don't wait. Aaron Charley Donald? Donald? Donald. 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 Aaron Charley Donald. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, it is. Um, wow. That shouldn't be hard to remember, one would think. Um, and it's <laughs> ironic that it's like the 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 antithesis of a quarterback compared to A. a. Ron Charlet Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Uh, Denald, yes. Well done. Um, at any rate, um, I think, can we stop talking about Jalen Ramsey as being great, by the way? Are we done with that now? Let's calm down. He's good. Let's calm down, though. Thank you. Yes. I, I always kind of felt that way. I do appreciate him kind of, how you say, mellowing out a bit after he left Jacksonville. Yeah. But, you know, let's bring it back down to earth. Although, in his defense, one of the touchdowns, or one of the big balls allowed that touchdown was a complete miscalled yeah. by the official. And I really hate these ambulance, whiny, hater-aid, what, but, but that call, really shouldn't be called, it's a fix. Bull crap. Listen, I wouldn't have called it, but the foul is there, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, staff, real quick, um, real quick before we get to uh, the other yes. uh, stuff. Um, I don't know. We, we've never discussed this really about Hall of Fame and this and that. I've always said that the numbers may help him, but certainly the ring, a ring, will definitely boost his credibility going forward as he gets toward the end of his career. He's still in his prime of his career, to be honest with you. He's 13 years in his career. Still got a lot of football ahead of him. You know, in now this day and age, sure, yeah. Now he has a ring on top of that now, you know. I'm not saying the guy's the first Bell Hall of Fame right now, but as he pads the numbers and maybe gets another ring, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but that's... No, I, I don't think it will either. All right, but, but that seems good enough to at, least, to at least get there. You know, with the, the NFC being a little bit... Just right now, we'll see how much free agency and, and, you know, the draft, of course, but I, I, have, I have no problem... I have no problem uh, saying that right now, in, at least in the NFC, they're the favorites in the conference right now. NFC favorites in the conference. I mean, I'm not prepared to have that conversation yet simply because we don't know who's going to get drafted or anything else that's going to happen at this point. Um, that's, that's what I'm saying. Give it, give it. <clears throat> We're looking at it right now, just before we get to the draft, before we get into the, uh, you know, the free agency and whatnot, right, they are right now, to me, the best team right now, at least going to next year before we start, in, you know, looking at other things. Well, I'll put it this way. Um, I'm looking. I, I'm looking at Stafford's number here. Numbers here. Like his biggest problem early on was staying healthy. 
right? His first two years, he got hurt, right? The first year he plays a whole season, the Lions make the playoffs. Now, do they win a game? Of course not. They're the Lions. Right. Uh, <laughs> but I believe, you know, injury history hurts him as much as anything else. And yet, nonetheless, if he th- if he throws one swing pass, he's going to break 50,000 yards passing. And he already has over 323. What is it? 323 touchdowns with uh, 161 passing. You know, that's that's not bad at all. Um, but what I find impressive is you have some of these years where he's throwing damn near 5,000 yards without without Megatron, right? Without Megatron in 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 the um, in the roster and right? pre and pre Cooper Cup also. And obviously pre Cooper Cup, like those are Lions numbers. With a Lions offense, he's almost throwing five thousand yards. Okay, this is why uh, this is why we've tried to tell you, <laughs> all you MFers act like you forgot about Dre. Okay, see what I did touching on the um, yeah. So, um, I mean, listen, John Matthew Stafford needs to be given a chance here. Apparently, Matthew already is his middle name, by the way. Yes, I'm saying I, I, I post that after, after the Bucks game, remember? John, yes, you did. Yep. Yeah. Went ahead and gave him the game was flowers early. You know, I'm, I'm good for that kind of stuff. But I agree with you. Aaron Donald should be MVP, in my opinion. I mean, I'm not mad at Cup for getting it. But yeah, Aaron- I, and, and listen, props to the extent that they didn't just lazily give it to John Matthew Stafford. I, I agree. No, I said too last week. On, you were here last week on the, on the podcast because we were doing the uh, prop bets. I said that... The odds of a non quarterback getting, getting the MVP was a lot higher this year than, than it has been in a long time. Oh, yeah. So, agreed. So, too, did agree. Uh, Steve Mariucci, um, uh, James Jones, and uh, um, uh, D'Angelo Hall. All three of them agreed as well. All right. Bengals. Um, obviously, fantastic season. Uh, four wins last year. You know, Joe Burrow comes back, comeback player of the year. We'll get to that in a second with all the NFL award stuff. <clears throat> they, they improbable. Probably winning the 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 AFC North division, then they run you know run through the AFC playoffs, beating the uh, the Raiders, the Titans, and the, and the Chiefs, and had Rams on the ropes. You know, the 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 question the 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 the, uh, the worry for me now going forward is this. Well, first of that O line is bad. They got to get that O line fixed, like in yeah. heart, because Joe Burrow won't last five more years in this league if that line is the way it is. Uh, absolutely. Um, second. I, I have a hard time seeing the Bengals back here next year, at least next year, because that conference, the AMC right now is just loaded and teams that were not in the mix this year because of injuries or major is- injuries or catastrophe. I expect back into the mix a la Baltimore Ravens. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be a little tougher this year for the, for the Bengals to reach here. But I, I do think they're, they're going to be a player for years to come in the conference. Oh, certainly. And because most of the times the AFC, so goes the AFC, goes so, so goes the AFC North. How often have we seen that? And listen, this is adorable. We're talking about the Browns improving, but they're not a factor. Not at all. And I get that they swept the Bengals, but okay, that's adorable. What else are you going to actually do? Right. Um, I'm pretty sure the Steelers are a non-factor. Um, they're going to be a great spoiler, though. We'll see. I think- quarterback. What happens with who to get a quarterback? We'll see. And listen, the proof the proof in your pudding of whether or not you're a good divi- a, a good division is how good your fourth team is. And if the Browns are your fourth team in this day and age in the NFL, you ain't a bad division. And oh, by the way, a fully healthy John Harbaugh coach Ravens team. Listen, uh, Lamar Demetrius Jackson is a factor. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 just plain Joe Burrow, as he he demanded to be called. I shouldn't de- uh, say demanded, but. Uh, said that he's fine with being called on the press conference I had with uh, I was on this time Monday last week. Um, you know, I, I this that's a team to be reckoned with. I feel like they have enough weapons. Um, I, I am surprised by how good their receiver core is. Right, mm-hmm. uh, Tyler Boyd is now a number three, and he's a very good player. And I don't think he's uh, unhappy about his role either. He's still got plenty of uh, action in the Super Bowl. Yeah, he did. You no. Know? Um, you know, I, 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 I'm with you. All they need to do is get really a little bit of an O-line upgrade, which I think since everybody that since two of their major players are still on a rookie contract, shouldn't be a problem. 
right? You could you could go free agency and get get an advanced guy and draft somebody maybe. You know, um, I, I don't know how deep this year's tackle draft or or guard draft or center draft is. Um, but I know that it's a bad quarterback draft, which automatically by default gives the Bengals a better shot than let's say the Browns or Steelers who are finding themselves in a bad quarterback state of being, right? So let's go real quick to close up. Letter grades. Bengals, go. Um, it's gotta be an A, right? An A plus in particular, right? Mm-hmm. This um, this yeah. is a team who I did expect to win 10 games. I did not expect them to be in the bleeding Super Bowl. I did call them as a top 10 team ahead of anybody you and I talked to. I tried to help you. I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. And I think that I think th- let me ask you, EJ, from your perspective, like that's the biggest example this year of me trying to tell you and you not listening. Right. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I, I would say it's pretty, pretty fair. OK, so there's that. Um, I, I don't need to elaborate anymore. Everything's been said about how awesome everybody is. And the defense, I'm completely surprised with. Trey Hendrickson, by the way, was in the Shrine game in 2017. I talked to this kid, and I had forgotten it was the same bleeding guy. We voted for him for defensive MP, MVP in that game. My friend uh, Drew Glukov, who um, I was with at two other outlets, but mo- most uh, currently the black and gold banneret, the outlet that sent us to that Shrine game does not deserve to be mentioned here because they didn't use that audio for Trey Hendrickson. And I'm a little bitter about that. Um, but <laughs> um, the pu- the punchline being, I mean, obviously this guy's developed since then to, to be a force on their uh, defensive line and the Bengals. Do you know, do you know who leads the Bengals in interceptions? Ernest Christian. This year. Yeah. It's not Eli Apple. <laughs> See, Eli Apple gets a lot of flack. That's a tough assignment he had, man. Yeah, keep mouth shut, though. You know, the same. Uh, is it Henderson? No, absolutely not. That's a defense end, but it is a linebacker. So I'm I'm, I'm closer in trenches. So yeah, yeah, it's it's more it's Morgan, their linebacker, and he had four interceptions. That that should tell you everything you know about the versatility and the talent of this defense. And I think because these are all guys that weren't starters. Um, the two, at least I mentioned, weren't starters this time last year. It was the two safeties and, and a couple linebackers. No corners started last year that are starting this year. And I think there may be one defensive lineman that started this year, not last year. And I, I don't have my notes with me. I left it in my bag, and I don't want to interrupt the cast to look for it. But uh, the punchline being, what they did with this defense wasn't supposed to work. And it did pretty good. I mean, listen, A plus all the way around. What more can I say? Yeah, I'm with you on that 100. On that <laughs> the fact they even won the division was A plus already, no matter what happened in the playoffs. Honestly, because I mean, this team was four wins last year. We were saying, okay, maybe they win five or six games this year because of the division being tough. You know, Baltimore, Pittsburgh still were hanging around. Cleveland comes to the year was definitely still you know a contender, quote unquote, and yet. They found a way to win the whole the whole division and then go for for as they did. So A plus for me. All right, and finally the last grade well, of the year. really quick, EJ. I want to make one point too. Like when everybody's talking about oh four game four wins, they won't win last year. But I knew they were going to be much better than that. I had even predicted six games of improvement, which they executed. But that's because I liked Joe before he was cool. So did I. So we we can both claim that since LSU, I was saying that calling Joe. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, finally, uh, the champs, the last grade of the year, LA Rams, what grade are you going to get them? Give them. I mean, you got to give them an a plus, right? Like this is one of those things, the more ballsy, this is the most ballsy assemble, uh, 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 assembly of talent I've seen since your Miami heat. And the only reason you, reason your Miami heat is more baller than this is because your boy, Pat Riley fired Stan Van said I'll coach him myself after going to the freaking uh championship game I believe or championship series sorry yep. the NBA finals I believe and losing it saying no Stan Van I got this and improving the only way you could by winning the title the next year so yep. that's the most ballsy championship uh personnel assembly he I've ever seen he didn't say the second place he did in the same year sorry he did he did it in the same season he fired Stan in the middle of the year and he won the championship that same year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's the one I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Balls. 
A, A, obviously, <clears throat> for me. I mean, the thing is, they were supposed to do this anyway, so this should be a, a surprise. I mean, most, most, most people had them at least get into the Super Bowl. Um, I didn't. I mean, at least, at least a title, at, at least a title game. I had them going to the title game at least. I think I did, yeah. And now, granted, where I did predict them going to the Super Bowl was when you asked for the predictions at the beginning of the playoffs, and you right. were trying to feed me A. A. Ron Charlay Rodgers. How'd that go? I thought that was. I thought that was the year, dude. dude listen, I thought it was the. <laughs> <laughs> I man. tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. Hell, I didn't listen to myself the second week round of playoffs. So hey, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's it's a bad look. It's a bad look. Um, before we close the Super Bowl, uh, quick discussion we were having on text during you know during the game and the halftime show and all that. Did you enjoy the halftime show? Yeah. Um, I think there's an element of recency bias out there. Like, there's so many greatest ever. Take a breath. Okay, Bruno Mars has entered the chat, bitches. All right, yes. um, and 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 that's just where the bar is. Like, if you can't compete with the Bruno Mars halftime show, you have no business being on there. Like, I liked, for example, Madonna and Shakira. I know why I like the Shakira concert, though. Okay, those hips don't lie. But what I mean to say, EJ Christian, wait, 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 Madonna or J Lo and Shakira? No, it's Madonna and Shakira. So Shakira, Shakira show was on there twice then. Because I know Madonna did one year by herself. Oh, yeah. No, Madonna's done more than one is what it is. Right. But I know Shakira and Jayla did one a couple of years ago. That I can't speak to. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah. it, it was that great. A, 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 the proof that that the J-Lo thing was not a great show. Um, you know. Um, yeah. I, I'm. I, I, you know, some people are moronic enough to think you too was a great one. But whatever. Um, <laughs> that guy. Um, yeah, but obviously it was a fantastic show and, and, and you know, <clears throat> this, this should tell you, like my mom was like, I didn't like the halftime show very much. Well, like, oh mom, it wasn't targeted at you. And then she goes, well, I did like Snoop Dogg and I did like this. I did like Dre. I like Dre's voice and I did like this and the thing they do at the piano was cool, but you don't know who Kendrick Lamar is. No, no, I don't. So that that's really what it boiled down to. Hey, he was a highlight of the whole the whole performance, in my opinion. Yeah, that's 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 certainly the word, right? Um, I'm certainly not here to knock it. Um, and again, I think listen, it, this this show should be regarded. Uh, we've had some good shows. You know, it used to be that it was a throwaway for a minute there, like Coldplay. Seriously, you know, but some efforts have been made. You can tell. I believe Jay Z is in in bed with the NFL doing performance stuff, right? You can see that's having an, an a good effect. You know, what more can be added? I, I thought it was good. You know, obviously it's been two days removed. Um, if you ask me right now, I, I put, definitely put a top ten. This, this top ten is fair. Ten, it's fair. It's top five. I got to sleep in a couple. I, I think for me, for to be a true top five, I, I had to sit in a couple, couple years or so to really not have to have the reaction, to have it see like it's it's still rough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's such a different thing to, to to kind of rate too. Like I think we can all agree, for example, the weekend was a horrible halftime show. Uh, see, I I didn't think that was horrible, but everybody... Compa compared to what happened last our uh, Sunday night, right? Right, well, that you was know. horrible. I, 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 it was a little it, it was a little out there, but they I, tried. I, I like that they tried, but they failed. Is what I'm saying. Right. Um, I mean, the only thing I, I you you were saying that Prince's one was actually boring. I like. Yeah, I didn't care for it. It was kind of boring. I mean, other than his phallically uh, shaped guitar, you know. Best. I mean, of course you're entertained by the phallic guitar. You're the one watching wrestling on the cock all the time. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> that joke gets better and better every time. That's great. That, I, I, that I would be the peacock for you dirty-minded fans out there. Top five in order. Prince, Michael Jackson, Bruno Prince Mar is number one? Are you crazy? Yeah. Okay, I know this is your pod. Give me the password. I'll log out. Go away. You, wh why are you here? <laughs> well, for years it was Michael number one, but then I, I you know, again, you. Chris isn't even better than Bruno Mars, dude. He's not better. That show isn't better than Katy Perry. Katy Perry was actually on one of, was on the rated ones. To be honest with you. And so, so those pinks. Pink was good. Pink was really good. Uh, you two, you, obviously, you, you, you like you two on the on that list. I did not. I go back and forth. I actually go back and forth between Beyonce and Lady, Lady Gaga, to be honest with you. 
I mean, that one wasn't a bad one, but I don't know that it's a top five worthy occurrence. Hmm. You know. Uh, who knows? Fucking amazing. fantastic. Anyway. Right? Anyway. Uh, what else on the docket here before we get going? Um, oh, yeah, the NFL uh, honors reaction. Yes. I'm just going to ask you, we'll, 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 we'll rapid fire these real quick, and you just give me your whether you agree or disagree with the uh, the awards of handout here, the major awards here. All right. Um, I'll go backwards here. Assistant Coach of the Year, Dan Quinn. I like it. I think Dan Quinn's been an essential part of that staff, and the only other guy, in my opinion, that might have deserved it more. Um, actually, no, I can't say that this year. Um, yeah, no, Dan Quinn's the pick because to have that defense still be as intimidating as it was with all the injuries throughout the year, absolutely brilliant. I think Dallas going to be a problem next year if they get their shit together. Could be. Yeah. I mean, look at that. The division at least should be theirs, right? Right. Man of the year, Andrew Whitworth. Listen, that guy was doing work with juvenile, uh, uh, juvenile uh, uh, detention or juvenile uh, delinquents uh, back in his Cincinnati days. I talked to him about that back in 2014. And you just talk to the kids and do something to give back. And while I don't necessarily have in front of me what he's done since, if he's kept up or built on that over the past eight years, how can the answer to that be no? Yeah. Um, and he won a ring. And I remember he's going to be retiring after this. So. Uh, he's 40. The dude has more The dude has, has more salt and pepper than any Super Bowl halftime show I've seen. Catch my meaning? Ooh, baby, baby. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Coach hey, Vier, I, I, I know I forced that joke. One might even say that I would push it. <laughs> Apparently you're laughing. I pushed it real good. Really boom, good. boom, boom, boom! <laughs> <laughs> he did it, he did it. Uh, Coach Vier, did I my, make you want to shoop? Anyways. Uh, Coach of the Year, Mike Vrabel. This was controversial, actually. Um, I, As I said it earlier, um, I'm not mad that he got it. What really makes me t- tilt my eyebrow is how much he dominated the voting. Like everyone else, had, every other coach in Canada had single-digit votes. Belichick had one vote. Apparently, pro- uh, probably Washburn. Zach Taylor apparently had, had only two, two, two votes. Yeah, absolutely asinine. If that's the case. Ridiculous. Uh, comeback player of the year, Joe Burrow. Absolutely fantastic. And anybody who has a problem with it is a big homer, like Big Jim. Bing! I agree, 100%. Oh! <laughs> I agree. Uh, defensive rookie, uh, defensive rookie of the year, Micah Parsons. Unanimous. And there's a reason. Mm-hmm. Okay. Matter yeah. of fact, I'm not even going to talk about that. I'm going to go back and reference something uh, with the previous uh, 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 award, since that's so easy to talk about. You know, that's the most you've sounded like a Giants fan all year. Anyways. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Offensive rookie of the year, uh, Jamar Chase. How do you not put that? I mean, the only one that really, in my opinion, had a true. And don't get. I know that they wanted to talk to me about Jay Waddle. No, stop it. Um, the only other guy who might have had a close answer is uh, Mac Jones, but I think he was getting props more for not screw it up than he was for being great. And Jamar Chase was simply great. And the fact that he was his expectation was to be an absolute bust by some completely horrible analysts, by the way, um, I think had a lot to contribute to it. And it should. His expectations were low. Mac Jones is. Mac Jones met expectations. Jamar Chase certainly exceeded them, right? I agree. Uh, Defensive player of the year, TJ Watt. I got no problem with it. I, of course, would have picked um, Aaron Charlet Donald, but, um, you know, I'm going to say no to a Watt brother. You're out of your mind. Mm -hmm. That's right. Offensive player of the year, Cooper Cup. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I I couldn't be happier with the fact that they did that. And, um, you know, good. Uh, what a year. Historic. Like somebody asked me, uh, who's a friend of mine, uh, he says, you know, they were comparing to, to, to don't get mad. I'm just asking him a question. But some of them were so people were comparing Cooper Cups here to like to like your boy. Who do you mean? Jerry. Yes, because what he did was very significant. That it was very Jerry Ricean, you know. Yeah, I agree. Um, and finally, uh, MVP. A. A. Ron, Charlie Rodgers. Yeah, I mean it's a regular season award, so you got to give it to him. You know, for for all the times that people were missing, for all the times that 
Um, he was, even though it was a self-inflicted wound to some extent, I'll grant, all the noise, somehow he managed to lead his team through it to become a number one seed. That can't be ignored. You know, um, I know a lot of people are, 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 are using their recency bias to say that Joe Burrow should have been MVP. But come on, dude. Like, look at all the guys on that roster. You can't even name Green Bay Green Bay's uh, tight end or any receiver not named uh, uh, um, well, uh, <laughs> I don't believe I'm doing that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Not any receiver not named. I'm going to call him Devontae Walker. That's not him. Adams. Thank you, Devontae Adams. I yep. do that all the time. It's what happens when you write for a team and you get a certain name in your head. Yep. Because uh, Devontae Walker was a big factor when I was writing for the Dolphins Wire, but I digress. Yeah. No one can, hardly anyone can name a receiver other than Devontae Adams. That's healthy because I could give you Randall Cobb, but he is not playing. So, you know, that should tell you everything you know if you're trying to make it about um, Joe Burrow versus uh, A.A. Ron. So, I agree. I agree. Obviously, no offense to Burrow on that. No, of course. All right. A couple stories we get out of here. Um, Colin Murray and the Cardinals. The story is getting a little weird now. Like, Colin Murray, his reports came out last week that the Cardinals are going to cut Colin Murray because he's uh, not a leader type. He's not, not a first one, last guy out, kind of guy. So, he needs to mature, is what they're saying. And then Kyler Murray goes out on Instagram and proves him right. Right. I mean, next question. There's there's no story here, but they're going to talk about it because the offseason's coming and they need something to fill the damn time. Isn't also Colin Murray up for extension? <clears throat> sure. We, and we've had this conversation about negotiating in the media. I think Kyler's doing that. I, I don't know that that's a great move for him to make right now, especially since we're looking at some very interesting free agency options out there. Like, I'm not saying Aaron in a uh, Cardinals uniform is going to happen, but as an example, and not to mention, they can opt to 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 part ways with Kyler, keep keep him uh, somebody with a relatively low extension, or excuse me, a uh, contract, compared to what they're going to have to pay him soon if he continues to pan. Because they've got an excellent crew up there. That being said, I, I don't know what the locker room feeling about him is. I don't know if if veterans and others are are embracing him in his time of this alleged conflict with the franchise or anything. I don't have that. But I'm with you. I still think it's a contract negotiation, and, and I hope Arizona uh, handles it proper because I don't want to talk about this for months. No, I agree. Um, if, if it was players digging this out, I mean, it would be one thing. I respect the uh, I respect that. But if it's, if it's uh, like ownership or the, the front office, miss me with that bullshit, please. You know, because it sounds like a leveraging thing right now going on. It sounds too convenient. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so we'll see what happens there. Um, I don't, I don't think it moved. I think it'll be Corbett next year. So I don't think anything, anything, anything of that, of that, uh, anything of that was going to change. I think it'll still be Corbett next year. So, mm -hmm. uh, finally, also finally, final thing here. Uh, Carson Wentz and the Colts. Uh, looks like things might be ending faster. We realized, like we spoke about Chris Ballard. You know, GM Chris Ballard about uh, how disappointed he was in the, the year. Some of his language was using, you know, made, made you think that maybe something could be happening, but, you know, whatever. But now they're looking to move, move, on, move on with Wentz and looking to move on as early as March. I uh, really think that this is this is more leveraging and, 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 and negotiating through the media. They're letting free agents know that they're that they're interested and willing to party. Right. Um, oh, Wilson, uh, uh, even Garoppolo. Can you imagine Russell Wilson in Indy right now? Oh, my gosh. OK. Yeah. With a great line, too. Oh, my gosh. Like, the last time you've seen something like that was the years he was winning with the Legion of Boom. Jonathan Taylor, of course, I'm, I'm replaying, uh, replacing for uh, Marshawn Lynch. And listen, Jonathan Taylor and Skittles ain't that different in playing style. You know, kind of big and able to bruise, but can also run past you, too. The best O-line um, Rusty certainly had in years. But what is it they have in common, unfortunately? No real good receivers. Michael Pittman is an advanced number two, kind of like Tyler Lockett or even Doug Baldwin. Okay. If the Colts somehow draft or sign a big name receiver and Russell Wilson ends up on the Colts, you just rewrote the NFL. Because what is it I say all the time, Ernest Christian, that's underappreciated? The schedule. And the reason why Rust uh, Ru Rusty Carrington Wilson did not make the playoffs this year, wasn't just his injury, 
but the schedule down the stretch that prevented them from recovering from that. So, uh, percent chance that Wentz is back with the Colts next year? I'm going to give it a clean fitty fitty right now. That could go either way because there are plenty of options out there that are better than him right. and, and can be acquired for less money, but it's about negotiating past that contract uh, cap hit. And, and, and really the only reason why he's not already gone, in my opinion, is the money. Wentz, honestly, <clears throat> it's like a good stealer, future stealer. Um, it could be. I feel like the Steelers are in position to acquire a quarterback better than that, if you believe the rumors. Like, if we're if we're taking A.A. Ron to Pittsburgh seriously, that's one. I think Jimmy Grops is a good and better fit in Pittsburgh than the Mercedes Wentz. Um, you know, I think the Mercedes Wentz needs to go to the shop, and and I think he's done. I think I think he hit the style of football he played that nearly got him an MVP before he suffered his first big injury is not the same guy. But I'm wondering if he thinks he still is. Right. All right. Anyway, look away. That was fun. Wow. Hang on. That's all I heard, so I didn't know. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> listen. Super Bowl. Um. Man, listen. A lot of good moments this year. Here on the Football is Awesome podcast, as EJ Christian uh, builds the uh, Op Nation 2.5. Kidding. Um, fake, <laughs> news. fake news. Fake news. You are fake news. Um, the only thing fake news around here, sir, is your top 10 rankings. Anyways. Coming this oh, week. Hold on, right? That's coming. That's what she said. Come Anyways. On. She just said that, and, and that's coming. Maybe we got to hold up tonight. Um, it's coming up tonight. Oh, oh. Um, your wife likes that uh, huddle of podcast that much. That's good to hear. Bing! Anyways, I mean, you know, I should hope so. You guys do the vibe lounge together pretty soon. Anyways, of course, I'm Kyle Nash, the student of the game. You can find me on Twitter as the SOTG. Find me on Instagram as the same, the, the SOTG. Find me on Facebook as a student of the game. And of course, my worst, you can find all my Super Bowl coverage and things like that involved with the three-point conversion. My man, Controversy Raphael Haynes, Carita Parks, and others involved this weekend. And hey, our very own uh, Mike Patton, the general, going to be around with that as well. Um, also, check out my work with the Black and Gold Bannerettes. There is college basketball still being played. Five more home games between the men and the women there at UCF. And I will be in the press, the, the press area for both of those. So that's a good time. And of course... Now that all my Wednesdays are about to be open again here sooner than later because that basketball is uh, 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 going to be wrapping up on the season here pretty soon, what with March Madness rapidly approaching in and of itself, recording more episodes of me and Demosthenes with hilarity by default. We got plenty in the can. I don't know how many he's pushing or not, but I can tell you that we will be recording again very soon on that front. And uh, Ernest Christian, man, honor, joy, privilege. Doing football is awesome with you this year. Hope uh, you can make it. When yeah, the now, so we're in the offseason now, so we'll, we'll get in some like uh, episodes won't be as week, weekly anymore as they used to, but we'll obviously have to we have to obviously the creativity coming up. We have the draft and some special episodes here, and we will sprinkle down the feed. That's right. the The episodes may not be weekly, and our content isn't weak either. Boom. So, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, check out my work with Big Jim Nice and the Huddle Up Podcast. Yes. So, thank you, Kyle. Thank you for Until the next time, brother man. Little season. Class dismissed. You got it.